Hi, I'm Jack Thompson. Before I dive into my story, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, will ya? Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. I am 55 years old, and I've been in the business consulting game for longer than I care to admit. It's been a wild ride, but nothing compared to what I'm about to tell you. I've been married to Melissa for 30 years now. Can you believe it? Three decades of ups and downs, and we've got three amazing kids to show for it. There's Emma, my oldest. She's 28 and sharp as a tack. Just landed a job at the local hospital. Then there's Lucas, 25, always tinkering with something in the garage. And my baby girl, Sophie, she's 22 and still in college, studying to be a teacher. Dad, can you help me with this job application? Emma called out one evening. Sure thing, sweetie. Let me take a look. I replied, always ready to lend a hand. That's how it's always been with my kids. We're tight-knit, you know. I've always busted my back to make sure they had everything they needed. College funds, first cars, you name it. Now, let me tell you about Melissa's sister, Diane. She's got this daughter, Olivia. She's 26, and let's just say she's been the apple of Diane's eye since day one. Jack, did you hear? Olivia just got a promotion, Melissa exclaimed one day. That's great, honey, I said, trying to match her enthusiasm. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy for the kid, but sometimes it feels like Olivia's achievements overshadow our own kids. Anyway, a few months back, I made a big decision. I took out this massive life insurance policy. I mean, we're talking serious cash here. I wanted to make sure my family would be taken care of if anything ever happened to me. Are you sure about this, Jack? Melissa asked when I told her. It seems like a lot of money. I'm positive, I assured her. It's for you and the kids. Peace of mind, you know? Little did I know how that decision would come back to bite me. So there I was, feeling pretty good about life. Business was booming, kids were thriving, and I thought Melissa and I were rock solid. Then, out of nowhere, bam. Heart attack. I was at the office when it hit. One minute, I'm on a conference call. The next, I'm on the floor, clutching my chest. Someone call 911, I heard my assistant yell. Everything after that is a blur. I woke up in the hospital, tubes everywhere, feeling like I'd been hit by a truck. Melissa was there, holding my hand, looking worried sick. Jack, honey, can you hear me? She whispered. I tried to speak, but nothing came out. All I could do was squeeze her hand. The doctors say you had a severe heart attack, she explained. But you're going to be okay. We're all here for you. The days in the hospital blur together. I'm getting stronger, but man, it's slow going. My kids are here all the time, though. That helps. Dad, how are you feeling today? Emma asks, adjusting my pillow. Better, honey. Still weak, but better. Lucas chimes in. You look good, Dad. Color's coming back to your face. I smile, but something's nagging at me. Melissa's been acting off. Can't put my finger on it, but it's there. One day... I catch her in a hushed conversation with my doctor. She looks nervous, keeps glancing my way. Everything okay? I call out. Melissa jumps. Oh, yes, just discussing your treatment. Later, Emma confides in me. Dad, is it just me or is mom weirdly chipper? I frown. What do you mean? I don't know. She seems almost excited. It's weird, given everything. I mull this over. Emma's right. It is strange. A few days later, I'm dozing when I overhear two nurses outside my room. I thought Mr. Thompson was critical, but his vitals are great. I know, right? The chart says one thing, but he looks way better. My eyes snap open. What the hell? Melissa's spending less and less time at the hospital. When I ask why, she's vague. Oh, just handling some paperwork, insurance stuff. Don't worry about it. But I am worrying. Something's not adding up. One afternoon, Lucas drops by looking confused. Hey, Dad, quick question. Is Mom buying a house? I blink. What? No. Why would you think that? He shrugs. I overheard her and Aunt Diane talking. They seem pretty excited about some house purchase. My mind races. A house? What's going on? Sophie visits next, and she's got news, too. Dad, it's weird. I went home to grab some stuff, and Mom's been packing things up, like your things. Packing? What do you mean, packing? Your clothes, some photos. She said she was just organizing, but... It looked like more than that. I lean back, my head spinning. None of this makes sense. As the days pass, I notice something else. 
I'm getting better, faster than anyone expected. The doctor seems surprised every time they check on me. Uh, Mr. Thompson, your recovery is... Remarkable, one says, frowning at my chart. I should be happy, right? But all I feel is a growing sense of unease. Why do the doctors seem so confused by my progress? Why is Melissa acting so strange? What's this about a house? Honey, I say when Melissa visits, I... Don't you think it's great how fast I'm recovering? She startles, then pastes on a smile. Of course, dear, it's wonderful. But her eyes don't match her words. She looks disappointed, scared. I lie there, piecing things together. The hushed conversations, the conflicting information, Melissa's odd behavior, my unexpectedly swift recovery. Something's very wrong here. I can feel it in my gut. But what? What am I missing? As I drift off to sleep that night, one thought keeps circling in my mind. I need to get out of this hospital. I need to find out what's really going on. The day I get discharged comes out of nowhere. My doctor walks in looking confused. Mr. Thompson, your tests are... Well, you're healthy enough to go home. I'm feeling pretty good as I settle back into home life. It's weird being out of the hospital, but... Man, it feels great to sleep in my own bed. I'm just about to grab some coffee when my phone rings. It's my lawyer, Steve. Jack? Jack Thompson? He sounds like he's seen a ghost. Yeah, Steve. What's up? There's a long pause. Jack, I... I just got a call from your life insurance company. They're processing a claim on your policy. I nearly dropped the phone. What? What are you talking about? Steve's voice is grim. Jack, according to their records, you're dead. They were notified of your passing and are preparing to pay out the policy. My mind's reeling. But I'm not dead. I'm right here. I know, Jack. That's why I'm calling. Something's very wrong here. Just then, Emma burst through the front door, looking pale. Dad, I found something at work. Your medical files. They don't match up. Someone's been tampering with them. I put Steve on speaker. Emma, tell Steve what you found, as Emma explains. Sophie walks in, laptop in hand. Dad, you need to see this. I found obituaries for you on Mom's computer. The room starts spinning. I grab a chair to steady myself. Then Lucas joins us, his face ashen. I just got off the phone with a real estate agent. They were calling about Olivia's new house. Said the paperwork was almost done. We all look at each other, the horrible truth dawning. Steve's voice crackles through the phone. Jack, I think you need to call the police. This sounds like fraud. I take a deep breath. No, not yet. First, we need to confront Melissa. We wait for Melissa to come home. When she walks in, her face goes white, seeing us all there. Honey, what's going on? She asks, her voice shaking. I stand up slowly. Melissa, why does my insurance company think I'm dead? She stammers. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Emma steps forward. Mom, I saw Dad's medical files. They've been changed. Sophie opens the laptop. And I found these obituaries on your computer. Melissa crumbles, falling into a chair. I... I can explain. Please do, I say, my voice hard. Explain how you tried to fake my death for insurance money. She breaks down, confessing everything. The gambling debts, the desperate plan, the forged documents. I did it for us, she cries. For Olivia, we needed the money. And I thought... I thought it would solve everything, Emma explodes. Solve everything by killing Dad? I wasn't going to kill him, Melissa wails. I just, I needed the insurance money for Olivia's house, for our debts. I feel like I'm in a nightmare. So you thought faking my death was the answer, leaving our kids without a father? I'm sorry, she sobs. I didn't know what else to do. Sophie, always the quiet one, speaks up. Mom. Do you realize what you've done? You betrayed us, all of us. The room falls silent. The weight of Melissa's deception hangs heavy in the air. I look at my wife of 30 years, this stranger I thought I knew. Melissa, I want you out of this house. Now. As she packs her bags, I turn to my kids. They look shell-shocked, angry, hurt. I'm so sorry, I tell them. I had no idea. Emma hugs me fiercely. It's not your fault, Dad. We're just glad you're okay. Lucas nods. We'll get through this. Together. Sophie wipes away tears. 
What do we do now? I take a deep breath, picking up the phone. Now? We call Steve back, and then the police. It's time Melissa faces the consequences of what she's done. As I dial, I watch Melissa walk out the door. I feel a mix of anger, betrayal, and an odd sense of relief. The truth is out. It's awful. But it's out. Now the real work begins. The next few weeks are a whirlwind. I'm sitting in Steve's office, signing divorce papers and custody agreements. You sure about full custody of Sophie? Steve asks. I nod firmly. She's still in college. She needs stability now more than ever. Emma and Lucas have been rocks through all this. They're at the house when I get back, helping me sort through things. Dad, we've been thinking, Emma starts. Maybe it's time for a fresh start. New furniture, new look. Lucas chimes in. Yeah, and I've been looking at some home security systems, just to be safe, you know? I'm touched by their concern. Thanks, kids. I don't know what I'd do without you. A few days later, Steve calls with news. Jack, you won't believe this. We've uncovered evidence of Melissa's involvement in insurance fraud at her workplace. This goes deeper than we thought. I sink into a chair, stunned. How long has this been going on? Years by the looks of it, Steve replies grimly. The hits keep coming. I hear through the grapevine that Diane's husband found out about her role in Melissa's scheme. He's left her, taking their younger kids with him. Then there's Olivia. Poor kid had no idea about the source of her new house. Now she's facing foreclosure due to all the legal complications. It's not fair, Sophie says one night. Olivia didn't know. I sigh. I know, honey, but sometimes we pay for other people's mistakes. Melissa's life is unraveling fast. Her gambling debts have caught up with her, and she's facing financial ruin. Part of me feels sorry for her, but a bigger part is just... tired. I throw myself into work, into rebuilding my relationship with my kids. Slowly but surely, things start looking up. Two years fly by, my consulting business is booming. Turns out, near-death experiences make for great motivational speaking material. The kids are thriving, too. Dad, guess what? Emma bursts in one day. I got promoted to head nurse. Lucas isn't far behind. And I just landed a big contract for my repair shop. Sophie graduates with honors, already lined up for a teaching job. I couldn't be prouder. So we've come so far from that dark time. Then, out of the blue, Melissa calls. She wants to meet to apologize, to try and make amends. I consider it for a long moment. Then I think of everything we've been through, everything we've built without her. I'm sorry, Melissa, I say finally, but that chapter of our lives is closed. I wish you the best, but we've moved on. As I hang up, I feel a weight lift off my shoulders. We've been through hell, but we've come out stronger. My kids and I, we're a team. We've got each other's backs, no matter what. Looking around at the life we've rebuilt, I can't help but smile. It's not perfect, but it's ours. And you know what? That's more than enough. Hey, kids, I call out. How about we go out for dinner tonight? I think we've got some celebrating to do. As we head out, laughing and joking, I realize something. This, right here, right now, this is what happiness feels like. And I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. The story of Jack Thompson and his family's betrayal has come to an end. Now, I have a question for you. If you were in Jack's shoes, would you ever be able to forgive Melissa for what she did? Or do you think some betrayals are simply unforgivable? Think about it. She faked his death, risked tearing apart their family, and nearly left their children fatherless. All for money. But she's also the mother of his children and his partner of 30 years. Is there any coming back from that kind of deception? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Would you choose forgiveness or stick to your guns like Jack did? If this story got you thinking, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more thought-provoking content. Your support helps us bring more stories like Jack's Delight. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.